that quarterback is terrific. Statistically, the best in the country as far as the uh, quarterback rating system, and he proved it tonight. Um, proud of our guys. Proud of our guys. They got absolutely nothing to hang their head about. They fought the uh, entire 60 minutes, came up short, but uh, still made Utah football history this year, Pac-12 champions, which had never been done uh, in our program. And so I uh, told them that exact same thing in the locker room. They got nothing to hang their heads about. It's been a terrific season. Uh, yeah, we're all disappointed that we didn't win the game uh, this, this afternoon, but uh, that's how life goes. And so, again, give all the credit to uh, Ohio State. And uh, like I said, they're very talented, and uh, we just didn't have quite enough in the tank uh, tonight to get the job done. So, thank you, there Coach. You go. We're going to open up the floor for questions. Please raise your hand and we'll have a mic run to you. And please state your name and media outlet when asking a question. We'll start right here in the front. Uh, Josh Newman, Salt Lake Tribune. Kyle, on the final Ohio State drive, you had all three timeouts. Was there any thought to using one or multiple of them? Yeah, if we could have got them behind the chains at least one time. But other than that, all we'd have been doing is helping their cause. You know, they were making first downs or second and short. And, and they only had one timeout left, so they had to – I didn't want to help them out. It was kind of a catch-22, but had we got them behind the chain, second and long, third and long, then uh, absolutely. And it was in the back of my mind. But, but the way the drive unfolded, um, I don't know if we got them to third down one time, but, but uh, it was uh, certainly in my mind. But when they only had one timeout, they couldn't afford to – you know, stopping the clock for them in certain scenarios, particularly in short yardage, would have been uh, detrimental. Okay, we have a question in the middle. Kyle, uh, Patrick Kinahan, The Zone Sports Network. I'm thinking I want to get your opinion on it. This quarterback, best you guys have faced maybe since Justin Herbert a couple years ago? I would say that's probably accurate. The kid is tremendous. Um, and like I said, the QBR, which is the quarterback uh, rating system that ESPN uses, which in my estimation is the most accurate and the most uh, telling of uh, statistics for uh, for determining how well your quarterback's playing, he leads the nation, and I think you saw it tonight. Why? Okay, the question here in the green. Josh Furlong, KSL.com. Kyle, what happened with Cam Rising there? Did he get knocked out, or kind of, and how's he doing? Well, I don't think he ever lost consciousness. I wasn't there right when he hit the turf. Obviously, I came out shortly thereafter, but uh, he's doing fine now, according to what uh, the post game report was. Uh, Unless something that we don't know about, uh, you know, materializes, we, he should be okay. And uh, speaking of that, couldn't be more proud of what Bryson Barnes did when he came in, came into a tough situation and led the team right down the field for the uh, tying touchdown. Uh, had an inclination to go for two right then, but uh, too much time left on the clock. Had there been under a minute, would have gone for two. That was the mindset. But they had a full two minutes and... Uh, you know, the analytics said not to do it either at that point. So, so we just went for one. But, but uh, Cam will be okay and proud of Bryson Barnes for what he did. We have a question from the gentleman in the gray. Trevor, on K KSL Sports uh, for Britton and for Devin. Um, what are the emotions going through your head right now that, now that you guys have played your last game as a U? Just, uh, <clears throat> just a lot to take in. Um, it's starting to hit me finally, you know. I don't want to take my pads off. <laughs> um, just proud of this team and this program, this university. I, I just have a great love for the University of Utah. And Sorry. Um, just great. <laughs> yeah, um, just like Cubby was saying. Um, it's obviously very frustrating, uh, especially coming up that short. But, you know, I think Coach Witt hit on the locker room. We've accomplished so much this year. And we banded together, you know, as a brotherhood, you know, this year. So it's obviously frustrating, very frustrating um, to come up this short. But that doesn't take away anything that we've accomplished this year and, you know, all the success that we've had this year. Let's have a question from uh, the gentleman in the back in the blue. Britton, this is uh, Kevin Nin with BuckeyeScoop.com. Were you shocked that Ohio State kept kicking off to you and kind of walk us through your kickoff return? Yeah, well, 
I, I had an inkling that we might have a few opportunities this game, just based off of sea level, how far he kicks it. Um, if you notice, after that kickoff return, they started kicking it short, trying to kick it to our up fullback. They kicked it out of bounds one time. So I think after that, they started to, you know, I was surprised that very last one, but then they kind of just played a prevent kind of contain. Um, but that's usually what happens with returners is beginning of the season, first three or four games, you get some chances, and then after that, people stop kicking to you. So um, I, think, I think the only reason why is because we were at sea level or, or wherever, and it doesn't travel as far. We have a question from Steve up front. For Kyle, Steve Futterman from CBS News. I, w I wanted to ask you, you brought this up about the idea of if the timing had been different, you might have gone for two. Was there any idea about trying to s milk the, the clock down so you would have that last chance or was just too much time left in your situation? Yeah. I know it's sort of a, a catch-22. You would like to slow right. it down, but you have momentum going. Yeah, the latter. Uh, and with Bryson in there, very little experience. Uh, we don't want to put any more strategic stuff on his plate than we had to. And so, like I said, I thought he did a great job of engineering that drive, got us in the end zone. And, you know, at some point we got to play defense and we just didn't play very well all night long on defense. It wasn't our usual. And uh, thought, uh, thought sure we would be able to get a stop. And it all started with poor coverage on the kickoff. Our kickoff unit all night long uh, just wasn't up to, up to par where we needed it to be and uh, put us in bad field position several times, and that was one of them, and unfortunately that was the game winner. We have a question up front here in the green, and then we'll go to the blue. Yeah, Kyle, obviously you had uh, Makai Bernard on both sides of the ball. Was there any any decision to have him play both there, and then also how do you feel like that all went with having him as the starting corner? Well, we felt he was our best option at corner. You know, we had th three of our top four corners down, but that's you know no excuse because you got to play with who you got healthy. But Makai, we moved him over from running back. And again, we thought he was the best option after evaluating uh, things in practice. Uh, yeah, it was the plan to play him sparingly on offense, uh, full-time on defense, sparingly on O, and absolutely no special teams work with the exception of uh, he was the off returner on kickoff return for the first couple. Then we subbed him out on that as well. But, but uh, yeah, Makai, uh, he gave us everything he had, and uh, we appreciate his courage for making that change. You hadn't played defensive back since high school, and, and uh, to be willing to do that for us, uh, proud of him. Very proud of him. Question up here in the blue. Uh, two questions, Kyle, if you'll, if you'll bear with me. Um, you know it, you have some idea of what's coming back next season. You know what's coming in. Is there reason to believe that there could be a, a similar level of success next season, just knowing what you have? Well, we're excited about the youth and the talent on this football team. Uh, we went through the roster the other day, and it was 72 of our 85 scholarship guys are scheduled to be freshmen or sophomores. <laughs> Again, you know, we're we almost in the same boat as this year, and uh, many, many of those guys are playing for us already, particularly on defense. And so we're optimistic about the future. Can we repeat? I mean, I think it's too early to talk about any of that right now. But uh, we do like the level of talent, particularly the young talent on this football team, and, and uh, looking forward to working with them uh, starting this winter. And just to clarify, was Bryson number two, and was Jack Quinden available tonight? JJ was available, but Bryson was number two. Yep. We have time for two more questions. We have one up here in the front with the white jacket. Hi, John W. Davis with the Southern California News Group. Uh, this question is for all of you. What is it about Utah football for Coach and Devin and Britton that makes you guys never quit? Um, I think it starts with um, the culture that you know Coach Witt sets and uh, he establishes in each and every one of us. Um, and then from the top down, it's just a matter of everybody buying in, you know, assistant coaches buying in, players buying in. And, I mean, it's really, you know, the type of guys that they recruit, you know, we have that underdog mindset where, you know, we're never out of it. And even the higher rated guys, I mean, it's just, you know, those are the type of guys that he wants in the program and those are the type of guys he gets. And then it's a matter of just really buying in. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think this season is kind of a good metaphor for our team, right? Starting off one and two, losing a couple of our teammates, um, battling back through everything. And uh, I think it's just a good metaphor for our team and for life. Uh, I think uh, the reason why our program has that, 
that identity is because of the stability that Coach Witts brought to it. We kind of just feed off of him. And then, like Devin said, most of us are, you know, one or two star guys coming out of high school. <laughs> A lot of us are, and three star guys. And uh, you kind of carry that with you and, and band together. Yeah, just to echo with these guys, uh, their comments. Uh, they have a warrior-like mentality on this football team, and warriors don't quit. That's just the bottom line. Uh, there's a great deal of mental toughness uh, on our squad, and uh, it, you know, and, and the, the players that we recruit into the program learn from the guys that are already there. The standard is set. We have a saying: the standard is the standard, and that's what the expectation is. And the new recruits that come into our program become us. We don't become them; they become us, and we're a mentally tough physically tough outfit. That's just uh, what we pride ourselves on. We have one last question from the gentleman in the Bruins jersey. Back left. Hey, Eric Lampkiss, the second Culver City Observer. Um, the passion that you all play with is evident. Result, throw it out the window. What is it that you guys love about the game of football? I'm so, who's that directed to? I'm For sorry. all of you. Go ahead, guys. What do you love about the game of football? Oof, that someone my size can go against someone his size. <laughs> I think that's what I love about football. It's just, you know, you look at someone like Bam Olaseni, uh, you know, what, 6'8", 340 or whatever, and then you look at me, like 5'2", 120, and you just, you put them on the same field, and, and you each kind of have a niche, and you, and you, uh, I think that's, what's I, that's what I love about it. It gives everybody an opportunity, no matter what body type or whatever it is. It just, it's the ultimate team game where you just take a bunch of different types of players, di types of people um, from different backgrounds even in life, and you just put them together and say, make it work. Um, starting off for me, you know, when I was first started playing football, you know, I really just played it because I enjoyed it. It was fun, but as the years have progressed, I really – found how much actually comes with football the, you know the brotherhood you know I mean that's something that lasts forever and the life the life lessons that it teaches you so I mean football has really changed me as a man just because you know it's made me hone in on all the little details and I mean everything translates from the game to real life you know so I would just say I love football because of everything that comes with it yeah for me uh you know it's the ultimate team sport as Britt said the intricate strategies within the game are so complex. I don't think even well-versed, you know, fans don't understand. Unless they've played the game, you just don't understand it. Um, it's it's a, a sport where you rely so heavily on each other, uh, and you got so many different body types, like like Britt said. Um, but for me, you know, I've been around it since I was two years old. My father played professionally. He was a coach. I got into coaching after I play. I mean, it's been part of my life forever. But what I will say is uh, the chance to develop these young men. And I'm not talking about on the field. We, yeah, we take two, three star players and develop them and, and uh, end up having a lot of them drafted and being able to make a career of this game. But if that's all we did, then we failed. And so our main objective is to develop them as people. And there's so many lessons to be learned in football. Uh, discipline, work ethic, attitude, sacrifice, everything that you learn that can carry them through the rest of their lives is far more important to me than any development that occurs on the field. And so it's, uh, you know, that's, that's my take on that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Devin okay. and Britton.